as always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Man, I had to go with Kansas State, pulling off the dub last night at home against Kansas. That was impressive. That was a fun game. And now we got a three-way tie in first to top the, the toughest conference in college hoops, Iowa State, Kansas, and Kansas State. So uh, big stuff there. That was awesome. Uh, I loved that Bill Self called the the dagger timeout on his own player that buried the three at the top of the key. That was nice. I I know that you don't exactly love the Jayhawks <laughs> when it comes to hoops. That was an incredible game. And what yeah. an atmosphere there at the Octagon of Doom. Man, Jerome Tang not only is – you know, he he's going to be one of the leading candidates for Big 12 Coach of the Year, but he's got that team at 16-2. and two. When the next rankings come out, they're probably going to be in the top 10 in the country. With all those new pieces, man, he's going to be in the running for National Coach of the Year. Like, what he's doing is, is really damn impressive, man. Yeah, it's really impressive. You know, I thought yesterday during the day, I heard the quote of him saying, you know, I'm excited that everyone wants to come out for this game and it's going to be a huge atmosphere, but I want you to come for love of Kansas state, not for hate of Kansas. And I was like, Oh, well, who cares? Like, you know, that's, that's just I just want how, you to come. <laughs> yeah. That's just how it's going to be. I mean, you're like, we're just trying to figure out how to get people into the arena. So it's nice to have that, but you know, I ended up loving it because after the game there, he said, I told you I was going to give you one court storming this year. Uh, but from now on, we expect to win. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that was that was quite the scene. Like, he he shut down the F-U-K-U chant and turned it into, like, a K-S-U chant. It's, I've never heard a coach say that, ever. I've never heard him say, hey, love our team, don't hate the opponent. All you ever hear from pretty much any coaches. Hey, we love how passionate our fans are. Mm -hmm. I, I've never, I've never heard a coach. Now you hear coaches talk about the you know, religion and the Bible and, and those influences, but like to literally go full, Hey, love is greater than hate. Like one of the, you know, one of the common themes, right. In the Bible, I was like, okay, what, what about Jerome Tang? Like there, there's got to be something to this, and so I pulled up the old Wikipedia, Ted. And how about this? First of all, his story is crazy. I mean, to get where he's at, like it is, it is not a common path. But according to his Wikipedia, he first attended North Central Bible College in Minneapolis, Minnesota, before studying at home via online learning with Charter Oak State college i yeah yeah okay. your face says it all <laughs> okay but that's where i was like there's got to be he's got to have some type of religious background to I, I mean to say that as a college basketball coach that's different man that yeah. that is different to tell your fan base hey like hey this is about loving our team not hating the opponent like i'm not sure i've ever heard a coach say anything like that i get it but well, those two things are not mutually exclusive. You can love your team and still hate the opponent, which is going to occur between Kansas and Kansas State. Uh, but I will yield that it is a really good message. I, I'm with you. I will also say this. They beat Kansas in overtime by a point at home. Kansas was 6 of 29 from 3. Yeah. Grady Dick was 1 of 8. And didn't get a shot off at the end of regulation or at the end of overtime. Which is inexcusable. But yeah. Keontae Johnson, one of the coolest stories in all of college basketball. That dude is a stud. Yeah. I mean, certified stud. But yeah, Big 12 hoops, man. It is a grind. Is it bad that, you know, you said that, Kansas State beat Kansas at home by a point in overtime, and Kansas was six of twenty-nine from three. 
is it bad that my my first reaction is boy the officials kept him in it the officials kept him right there you are <laughs> you you and your hate for kansas basketball man it's <laughs> it is something all right who do you have as your loser of the week i gotta go with michigan um you know, we had the, what, the level two violation, notice of allegations that, that popped up. And then the level one, it gets hardball with the NCAA. Um, then, you know, there's a lot of that going around right there, right after the um, uh, the college football playoff. And now something interesting. Matt Wise, who's the co-offensive coordinator, has um, had to step away. And he hasn't been arrested or anything, but... You know, his his home was searched and computers were searched. Something has gone on there with regards to either like hacking or gaining access to emails uh, illegally. I don't really know what the story is, but something has gone on there regarding the computers up at the football offices. And somehow he's been implicated in in some shape or another. Now, some people think that perhaps he's been hacked and like, that's why they're, they're kind of searching his stuff to see like if someone has gained access to, to something through him, but I don't know. It's a weird situation right now. Yeah. The, the ESPN article I saw, I saw on it said the school's police department told ESPN it is investigating a, quote, report of computer access crimes that occurred at the team's football facility in December. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of any other example of anything similar to this. This feels like a first, man. I I, I don't know what it means. Like, was he doing something nefarious? Was someone doing something to him? Like, I can't wait to see how this plays out, man. Yeah, you know, and he released a statement, and I don't have it in front of me, but basically said, yeah, we're co- cooperating, um, doing everything we can. We can't really say anything because we don't want to jeopardize anything going on in the investigation, but we look forward to this uh, being resolved and getting back to work, essentially is what it said. But, you know, <laughs> that's a good statement. I don't know if there's anything to it, like if 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 it's legit or – you know, there's something something bad going on. I have no idea. It's just it's a weird situation right after Michigan already dealt with, you know, the the NCAA violation deal. Jim Harbaugh, you know, sniffing around for other jobs and deciding to stay. It's been tumultuous up there around Michigan, uh, you know, for the last month or so. I, I will say. That guy's a smart dude. Degree from Vanderbilt. A graduate degree from Stanford. Yep. And he was like John Harbaugh's right-hand man at Baltimore for a long time, right? Yeah. I, I've i got some conspiracy theories, but I'm going to hold on to them. Yes. Oh. I'm going I'm to hold on to it, right? Because this seems, this seems like a serious situation. I'm going to hold on to it, but let's let it play out okay. before. It's just, hey, Ravens have had a awful lot of success for a long time. Hmm. Mm. Patriots had a lot of success for a long time. Hmm. Well, it sounds like we're getting into the espionage uh, huh. realm here. Huh? We'll see. We'll see how this plays out. <laughs> Michigan last two years, huh? All of a sudden he, he shows up oh, a little more okay. success. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Now, I, I got no idea how this thing's going to play out. It's just weird, though. I mean, yeah. we've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I know. Hopefully, we get some information. I, there's, that's I the want a 30 for 30 on this. There's nothing right now. I want some scoop. I'm with you. All right, let's finish up with my winner and loser. But first, Ted, you've got the ad read for a new sponsor, baby. John Vance Auto Group has been serving Oklahomans for 40 years. They've got nine full-service dealerships in Woodward, Miami, and Guthrie. No matter what your vehicle needs are, John Vance Auto Group has you covered. They carry domestic brands such as Ford, Lincoln, Chevy, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, and Wagoneer. They also offer commercial vehicles and wheelchair-accessible vans. 
And we can't wait to tell you guys about their lifetime loyalty program. And we are currently working with them on something special to offer our listeners. We'll let you all know as soon as we finalize that. And until then, compiles their entire inventory or find the John Vance Auto or the John Vance dealership rather near you at VanceAuto.com. And First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs. Checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all. Whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone, everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. Make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. Visit FFB.com for more information. All right, for my winner of the week, Detroit Lions, baby. Ben Johnson, not going anywhere. And if you're like, who's Ben Johnson? He's their offensive coordinator. They had one of the top five offenses in the league. Jared Goff looked phenomenal in that system. And I know they didn't make the playoffs, but that's huge news for Dan Campbell, for that organization, for those players, because... This is a guy, Ben Johnson, he interviewed for the Texans head coaching job. He interviewed for the Colts job. He was supposed to interview for the Panthers job. But before he went there, he said, you know what? I think we're building something special. I'm coming back. This was one of my favorite offenses to watch in all of college and professional football. I love the the, the versatility of everything that they were doing. I mean, it was just really, really enjoyable to watch the different personnel groupings, how creative he was. This feels good for our former employer, Ted. Let's go Lions. Come on, man. I like it. And, you know, it's something interesting. And this is why I love Dan Campbell. Because any one of these three things could have happened. Dan Campbell could have intimidated, threatened, uh, violence against um uh against him for not if he was was going to, if he was going to leave he also could have like been on his knees crying uh because he shows emotion uh begging him to stay or probably most likely in the offices over a nice glass of whiskey convinced him to stay but all three of those options are on the table with Dan Campbell and i like it or he went, hey, man, just come crush it again next year. You don't want to be the head coach of the Texans. No. That organization's a dumpster fire. Oh, you, you want to coach for Jim Ursay? That guy's a complete weirdo. Like, now the Panthers won. Being friends with Tepper wouldn't suck. That'd be, I mean, their owner seems, seems like he's down to do what needs to be done to uh, to get that organization where he wants it to be. But. It's this is huge for Dan Campbell. And all of a sudden, like people are going to be talking quite a bit about the Lions in the offseason and getting them ready, you know, being a, a potential playoff team and being able to make some noise next year. Yeah. Well, uh, we saw how they ended it against Green Bay. Who knows what Aaron Rodgers' uh, situation is going to be there? Uh, you know, they should have a good shot in that division. And if not a wild card, yeah, I'm. I'm um things are looking good for Detroit. I know there was some some weird moments, funny moments with Dan Campbell, but I think at least from what I've seen, doesn't he seem to be like one of the most loved like universally the one of the coaches around the league by all fan bases? Like I don't know that there's anyone out there that dislikes the guy. You can't say that about all of the coaches out there. No. I think like he's a football guy, man. He's a football guy. He like cries, like everything about him. Yeah. He's impossible not to like. I, I know. know I, I loved him when in my short time there in New Orleans, he was the tight ends coach. Like everyone loved him. Yep. Also, what people may not realize, that dude is huge, huge. still. He is huge. huge. I mean, he's every bit of six six. And when he played, he was probably two seventy. And he looks like he's leaned up, but added some muscle perhaps like i don't the dude's gigantic some some enhancements of some sort right <laughs> Maybe, I, I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know what he's on but i need to get some here His shortly. motions are swinging uh wildly from one end to the other 
<laughs> no, but he he's the man. And yeah, there'll be a lot of people on the the Detroit Lions bandwagon heading into the next NFL season. It's going to be fun. All right, for my loser of the week, thought about going with TCU fans. It's been a rough stretch, mm-hmm. right? Last week, you get housed in the national title game. You lose your offensive coordinator to Clemson. This week, Quentin Johnston declares. Kendra Miller declares. We already knew Max Duggan was moving on. All of a sudden, you're looking around going, oh, no. Oh, uh, Trey Hodges Tomlinson declared. Like, you're looking around going, oh, no. We lost all of our best players. Steve Avila, their best offensive line. Like, they're going to have to reload, rebuild. I, I don't know which one it's going to be for Sonny Dykes, but, man, just it, it's what you want. You want your guys to be really talented. You want them to go to the league, all that stuff. But when you lose them all at once, not ideal. Yeah, all of that, and they're number 12 in the country right now in some of these way early uh, preseason polls, and I, you're not going to be able to sneak up on anyone. It's no. not going to be early November, and everyone's looking around saying, hey, is TCU still undefeated? Are they actually any good? Like That's not going to happen next season. Yeah, but my loser of the week, it, it appears a – the the Jaden Rashada drama has run its course. According to reports, he has filed paperwork to be released from his letter of intent at Florida. I guess those negotiations that his dad talked about didn't go so well, Ted. I mean, what a, what a disaster for Florida. Yeah. I, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know who to blame. I, I don't know. If the 13 million number that's put out there is legit, like if, if they promised that and then went back on it, like, I don't, I don't know enough about any of those numbers and maybe nobody does except for the people super close to the program. But, uh, it's really, it's ends up being a bad look for everyone involved. Unfortunately. Yeah. There, there are no winners in this thing, right? Like Rashada got to go find a new school, which I'm sure there are going to be plenty, plenty of schools that want him, but this is going to follow him around for the rest of his career. I mean, it just is Billy Napier in Florida. They lose their top ranked recruit at the quarterback position. That's a disaster. And then you've got the Gator collective. And I mean, you talk about a shot to your reputation, right? This has become, this is going to be the warning slide on every nil presentation across the country i yep. i mean there's no doubt that hurts florida in the long run so it's just kind of a de- disaster and you look this is a kid that's the you know depending on what rankings you like he's like the sixth or seventh ranked quarterback in the 2023 class like this is this is the first this story is like the first of its kind where like oh ooh. That is, this is what people like warned us about when it came to NIL and groups not delivering and all that stuff. This is, this is now the poster child for that. This is what happens whenever you, um, you make deals or you do business with entities that do not have a history, right? You know, most of the time, if you're doing a multi-million dollar deal with somebody, there's some extensive background as to who that group is, what like their business profile is, like what product they have. You, like, you don't think the Rashadas did their due diligence on the Gator Collective? There's not any diligence to do. I know. I, you know it's the, and it's the same thing really everywhere, though. So, I mean, some places are going to be able to back up their contracts. Others maybe won't. Um, you know, it, it's a... It's a weird business, but you're right. It is going to follow him. Um, unfairly, he's going to be cast as a guy that only cares about himself, only cares about money. He's going to go wherever the the money is right, doesn't care about anything else. Like that's whatever that's maybe that's the case, but maybe it's not. You know, I I don't know. It's um it's, that's the nature of it. I gotta tell you though. There ain't going to be no $13 million deals anywhere. Like, no. He's not even, a, I only think he's a five star quarterback. Is he four star? Four star from what I've seen. But 
Hey, his finalists were Miami, Oregon, Cal, Ole Miss, and AM. Uh, maybe Arizona State makes some sense for him with Kenny Gillingham leaving leaving Oregon and going and being the head coach there. But I'm laughing at Miami because it'd be so funny if he ended up there. Well, I was I was I just said there's not gonna be any $13 million NILs anywhere. I could see Ruiz at Miami picking up the 13 million just to stuff it in Florida's face, right? That'd be hilarious. That's like that's like hammering the nail into the coffin on Florida if you're Miami. Yeah. The the only other interesting part about this to me is I as far as I know, we haven't seen a player sue a collective yet. And depending on what the language in that contract looks like, the Rashadas may have a case, man. I'm interested to see if there's any legal action taken, which would be like you leave, you go somewhere else, and you sue them. <laughs> like it would be, oh man, that'd be hilarious. You end, end I hope up it getting happens. your 13 million anyways. And not only that, but like, what's the implication if that does happen? They do sue them. Like, what does that mean for everyone else at Florida that's under an NIL deal with that collective? I, I don't know, man, but. Because it's going to be, they're not going to get, it's going to be hard to get donations for them now. Like, people are going to think it's, it's a not disaster legitimate. for them. Yeah. For sure. Bad. Really yeah. bad. But it, we'll, we'll see where Rashada ends up landing. But what a story. God, I love college football so much. I lo- it's just, it's just the so drama. Popular. I love it. 